Okay. What we have here, folks, is at the top is Apple Maps and at the bottom is Google Maps. And Bill is driving and I have, uh, we inputted uh, the destination as the uh, Lutheran Church of the Cross and we're just comparing the two displays as we go along. Now, one thing to note is that you don't need to have your Wi-Fi or cellular on as long as you have GPS. Then the operating system will use the GPS to de display all the information you need. So that's a nice feature. If you're going out of town, you're not familiar, try either Apple Maps or Google Maps. Um, right now, I, or I have been using Apple Maps and I find it quite good, but uh, we're going to see just what does happen. At the moment, we're stopped at a stoplight and then we'll be on our way again. Now, Bill was telling me that there are some other features on Google Maps. I don't see it right now, but uh, I believe you were saying, Bill, that uh, one of the things is it'll show congestion. Uh, <coughs> with the red lines. Okay, I don't see any right now, but uh, yeah, with Google Maps, mm -hmm. that's the lower one. Uh, you might see uh, red um, on the street, and that would indicate that there is heavy traffic there, which would be nice. You can look ahead and see just what the situation might be. So, as we can see right now, we're just passing Chatterton Way on both uh, devices. <clears throat> you also notice that on the top one, which is Apple, it shows the time the minutes to destination and how far it is, being 4.4 kilometers. On the bottom one, it uh, has the same information in a different order. So seven minutes to the destination, 4.2 kilometers at the moment. And it also shows the current time as 9.46. So the two displays at this point are virtually identical. I would say the display on the top uh, map, uh, being the Apple Maps, is a little more what a lot of people would consider cluttered because it's showing various uh, street names in little boxes, etc. Whereas on Google Maps, it's showing the street name right on the road itself. So does it give the speed limit for this section of road? Uh, speed limit is not shown, no. But I suspect we might be able to set that up. We'll have to try that as a, another experiment. Okay, as you can see, we're coming up to McBriar. Uh, shows up nicely on uh, Apple Maps. Turn left onto McKenzie Avenue. And that was Apple Maps telling us to be prepared to make a turn in 900, 800 meters. However, uh, it's in conflict at this point with uh, Google Maps. Oh no, 900 meters, that, that's be, be right. So that's going on to Mackenzie is what it's suggesting on the top. 600 meters to Mackenzie. On the bottom, right now, it's not giving us any instructions. 500 meters, turn left. Oh, that's uh, uh, Google Maps just came up and said in 500 meters, turn left. So they both have similar information. Timing was a little different. <coughs> we may have a long wait here. I'm just going to put this. We're, we're, we'll go straight. Oh, okay. Let's see what she says. Okay, so we're going to see what Turn the... Turn left onto McKenzie Avenue. Turn left onto McKenzie Avenue. Yeah, see, we're not doing it. Now we'll see what happens. Mm 
Okay, the About Apple Maps. Meters. Turn right. Both of them have now. Meters. Turn left onto Reynolds Road. So uh, Apple Maps gave the earliest notification to turn uh, left onto Reynolds Road. The new update. At this point, Google Maps is not. Oh, it does. It says up at the top, turn. Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Google Maps is still not showing the turn. Turn left onto Reynolds Road. So, I'm not sure where Google Maps is going right now, uh, but Apple Maps wants us to turn left onto Reynolds. And up at the top of uh, Google Maps, it says Cedar Hill Crossroad, and it shows a turn right. So I'm not sure what's happening on that one. In any case, we're turning on to Reynolds Road. In 700 meters, turn right onto Cedar Hill Cross Road. Okay. Well, at least they both agree there now. We're going to turn on to Cedar Hill Cross Road. But I think Apple won out on that one as being more accurate, more in, uh, providing information more timely. Bill's chuckling away. Right onto Cedar Hill Crossroad. Okay, now it's telling us to turn right onto Cedar Hill Crossroad on both maps. Again, uh, Google uh, Maps seem to be slower in uh, giving the information than Apple Maps. I guess you could flick up and put up the sign. Uh, could what? Right onto Cedar Hill Crossroad. You can flick up from the bottom and turn up the volume. Oh, yeah, I think it's okay. okay. I, I, I think it'll... Yeah. Um, you don't need it anyhow. You know where you're going. <laughs> In 1.2 kilometers, turn right onto Cedar Hill Road. Now, you see, it's already telling us about Cedar Hill Road, which we haven't got any notification. Oh, yes, we do. It says 1.1 kilometers to Cedar Hill on the bottom map in the green. Now, it'll be interesting to see how long uh, it does take us when it told us at the beginning it was going to take, what was it, so many minutes? 11 minutes. Uh, 11 minutes? Hmm. Right now we're on 8 minutes, so. Now the top map is showing uh, the Earth and Church of the Cross, but to me, it says we just keep going straight. The one on the bottom, it also shows just keep going, but it doesn't actually show our destination yet. So we're eight minutes and 48, uh, well, almost nine minutes now, and we're at uh, Brayfoot, Epson, and Cedar Hill. As you can see on the top one, it does show us approaching the Lutheran Church.